for my takeaway, I would say it's, uh, you know, from our conversation, clearly the needs are urgent and they're multifaceted um, and require multifaceted solutions and engagement of uh, multiple stakeholders uh, in, in this process to develop a vision moving forward to support our communities and their futures. Marvin. Well, I think we know that there's ongoing discrimination and the vestiges of discrimination um, that continue to plague us as a country. And um, that's seen in many, many different aspects, financial as well as others. And I think that colleges and educational institutions are one of the places where we have the most opportunity to really make a difference and to give people opportunities. And we do need to be intentional about them and we do need to um, create networks and, and, and connections. Um, as well as lifelong friendships and relationships, whether it's with faculty or, or students or staff. And I think that it's, I mean, all the external forces need to be part of that, but I do think that if we can create a model, a diverse, inclusive and equitable model, um, that that's the kind of thing that will stand um, students in good stead as they move throughout their lives. Debbie? So college is a, is, is a stressful context. So all students who enter college experience lots of social and academic stressors. And for students of color, they're experiencing those along with um, challenges in the broader society related to their identities. And those challenges also seep into their campus spaces. So uh, which creates a different type of risk. Um, Students, but students enter these settings with agency and strengths, cultural strengths and personal strengths and resilience, but it shouldn't only be on them or on their backs to have them adapt successfully. So we have to invest in creating settings that are culturally inclusive and welcoming. Um, and if we don't invest that way, we actually might end up exacerbating <laughs> um, the challenge, the stressors and the negative impacts of the stressors that many students of color may experience. If we do invest, we could be a space of solace, support, uh, resilience as a campus to support students' individual resilience um, uh, in ways that help them move forward to meet the goals that they've set for themselves. So this investment is worth it. And Josephine. I'm going to say nothing happens in isolation. We are accumulation of all of our histories and it's really about where do we locate the problem. If we locate it in the students of color and say it's your fault that you're weak and you're frail, then we begin to pathologize the students. But if we accurately locate the problem in the systems in which we have to live and grow and, and learn, then we realize that it's actually not the students of color, but it's the systems that really impact um, their mental health. This has been a great panel. I want to thank all of you for taking part in it. And I want to thank our viewers. This has been an extraordinary session. And of course, this concludes this event. And I want to thank um, everyone, all of you who joined us today and to our wonderful, wonderful panelists. Thank you to the Steve Fund, GBH News, and the world from PRX and GBH. Join the forum again on November 20th for a discussion about the race for the COVID-19 vaccine. Latest updates. Thank you. I'm Philip Martin.